So uh, we're half of Coco Romy. We're a four-person collective. We started in Montreal in about 10 years ago. It's our 10th anniversary this year, so 2006. And uh, the other two are uh, Phil Fish and Damien DeFiti. And we started in uh, an effort to try to bring together the world of experimental and independent video games and uh, other kinds of culture, visual culture, music, events, and uh, to put those things together. And we run a series of events called Gamma that, that attempts to do that. So that's, that's sort of the backstory of, of where our game came from, it's one of these events. So the, um, and just one footnote to that, I think we may be the oldest surviving experimental game co-op. So if you, if you know otherwise, we would actually be really interested in finding out if that's true, because here's our 10th anniversary. Uh, so uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the background of the game that's showing in the VR salon uh, here um, as part of your realities and uh, in a video called Super Hero Cube. So we're not going to show that game at all because if you're interested in seeing that game, or uh, that ver version of the game, it releases in less than a week um, and you get a chance to play the VR uh, salon. What we did want to talk about is a little bit of the background of the game, which we actually started building in 2008, which I'm sure is when you all started working on your virtual experiences as well. Um, and uh, a little bit about uh, how this crazy project came together and in an attempt to answer the question, why the hell would anybody give us money to make a commercial game? Um, yeah. So when, in 2008, you can think back, um, there was this big hype about 3D televisions, and we, <laughs> yeah, everybody was supposed to go out and get one of these things, and get a special glasses to go with it, and, and we are, we're skeptics of these things, and, and they were also trying to get game developers to make games for them, and we're like, why the hell would anyone want to do that? So we, we had this event to make uh, games that use red, science, stereoscopic uh, games, but made that meaningful, so it couldn't just be a visual effect. The, the analytic technique had to be used in a gameplay meaningful way. And we, we wanted to see if that was even possible, we weren't even sure. Um, but we also, uh, individually, were also inspired by the work that came out that year from Johnny Lee, which, uh, who was at the time a master's or PhD student here at, at CMU, and he made this video that was about taking uh, your Wiimote, pointing it at, at yourself, and using the, the Wiimote, uh, bar, the, the infrared bar, as your uh, head tracking device. And so we put those two together. We put together the, the anaglyphic stereoscopic glasses and this um, really lo-fi head tracking technology. And here's how we did it. This is the real start of the technology. Hot blue guns. So, um, yeah, we whipped out the hot blue guns and the, uh, the infrared uh, lights. By the way, you have a chance to go back and look back at some of those giant new videos. We were watching them over Tons of great information about in virtual reality, computer tech, and design and stuff. It's great. Um, so yeah, so we um, built our first uh, headset, our first virtual reality headset in order to play some player two. Um, this is one of the versions of it right here with the LED lights. Um, hot glued on, uh, the battery pack attached, hot glued on to a pair of the plastic uh, series of uh, stopic 3D, uh, again, of the 3D red blue uh, glasses, and uh, set depth in um, using using head tracking in the game, and uh, that was the first version of uh, Super Mario Cube. So from 2008, uh, we turned around kind of this installation uh, version of it. Um, the head tracking was like just this breakthrough technology for it, which gave us a sense, which really created that sense that you were in the world, you were actually in that environment. Um, so uh, just having that changed entirely what you would do with the 3D. It was something to play around with in terms of the gameplay. It made you feel like you were there, kind of. I mean, for the time, pretty good. Um, yeah, so uh, version one, not very transportable. Um, actually, it's back here for one second. Sometimes electrocuted people. Um, we managed to, to uh, unfortunately, um, give a, a, a significant shock to uh, how I was a the artist in New York. Uh, she forgives us, we're friends now, it's all okay. If you let two people, they'll forgive you. Um, next version is used um, is Connect. So uh, when the connect came out, we're just like, oh, okay, we don't have to let two people anymore. We can use this visual technology. 
technology to track where somebody's head is. Um, sort of also a ridiculous way to use the connect because we're using the connect to track this motion as opposed to this motion, which seems to be what it was supposed to be designed for. Um, do you want to get like 10 seconds? This is a concept art work from the very latest version, but this is like from three years ago. We basically took our game and put it inside a James Turrell environment. And if you go play the game, you will see the influence, but this was a very early concept art, which is literally on top of James Turrell. Don't sue us, James. Thank you. Sorry, thank you.